All right, thanks for watching, and today we'll talk about rearrangement of a series, which is just a way of reshuffling the terms in a series. So for instance, if you have a series, let's say sum of a n, which is a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus dot dot dot, then a rearrangement is just a series of the form a prime n, which for instance is a2 plus a5 plus a1 plus a3 plus a4, dot dot dot. And how do you... Uh, how do you define it rigorously? Well, simply let Kn be a sequence that goes to all the integers, so all the natural numbers. That goes through each number exactly once. So it's basically a bijection between the natural numbers and the natural numbers. So for instance here, Kn would be just a sequence 2, 5, 1, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot. Then a rearrangement is just a series of the form Akn. Then a rearrangement... is a series of the form sum of a, not a n, but a k n. So for instance, this would be a k1, a k2, a k3, dot dot dot. Alright, and there are very exciting facts about rearrangement of series, and today I'll prove one of them, um, kind of the less exciting fact, you'll see why. Today I will show that if a series converges absolutely, then any rearrangement converges to the same limit. So fact, if, again, the sum of a n equals s, then at least I believe that uh, for any, then uh, the sum of a n prime goes to s as well. And that's for any rearrangement. So we'll just prove the convergence thing. But um, there's actually an even more exciting fact. That's why I said this is less exciting. Because it turns out if the series uh, converges but does not converge absolutely, then you can actually reshuffle the series to get any limit that you want. So for instance, you can show that there's some reshuffling that goes to 10 or goes to 20 or goes to minus 50. Doesn't matter. Um, All right, and, um, well, let's prove this. So the proof is quite neat. For this, we want to use, remember, this Cauchy criterion, which says that um, the tails of the series are arbitrarily small. So let epsilon be given. Then... Uh, since this series converges absolutely, then uh, there is capital N such that if, so I'll use M and N for something different, so let's use uh, B and A. So B is greater or equal to A is bigger than capital N, then the tails of the series, so sum from K from A to B of S of a k is less than so usually we'll use a um what's called mm. uh, usually we'll use a epsilon 
argument, usually we put epsilon, but uh, because there are two terms, we'll put epsilon over it. Okay. So here again, I just use the fact that this series uh, converges. Okay, that's how absolute values are okay. Now, we will have a very, very big number. So we'll construct bigger and bigger numbers. So now, uh, let P be so large that something happens. Because consider now the numbers 1, 2, up to capital N. Then, this is just a finite set of numbers. Then for sure, one is of the form uh, K something, and two is of the form, let's say, K10, and maybe capital N is of the form K50 or something. In particular, you can choose P so large, such that one up to capital N is included in K1, up to k capital kp. Okay. So just choose p so large such that this set is included in this set, which we can do because this is finite and this is a bijection. So let p be so large that k1 now that 1, 2 up to capital N is included in uh, K1 up to Kp. So just the hierarchy, just to remind you. So that was 1, for instance, and then that is capital N. And of course, we'll choose P even larger because, well, those are n terms, we'll of course need at least n terms here, and then we'll let n be even bigger. So let n be even bigger than p, and <laughs> let capital N be the maximum of n and the nth term, uh, kn. And then let m be the maximum of n and kn. And you might say, well, isn't kn doesn't it have to be bigger than n? No, it doesn't because, for instance, consider 1, 2, 3, but then k1 is, for instance, uh, 5, and then k2 is 1, and k3 is 4. Then you see k2 is not bigger than 2. We have to be careful here. All right, then, if you have that, consider now the difference of the partial sums. So consider Sn minus S prime N. So again, just to remind you, what is Sn? It's just sum of the first N terms. So A1 plus dot, 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 plus An minus AK1. Da, 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 minus a k n. This is why we need capital M, just to compare the two. But moreover, look again at the picture. The sum from 1 up to n is the same thing as the sum from 1 to capital N, and the sum from capital N plus 1 to n. So this is really the same thing as a1 plus dot 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 plus a capital N plus a capital N plus 1 plus dot 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 plus A N. On the other hand, this sum here, you can just uh, sort of re not rearrange this, but you can split it up to the sum from 1 to P and the sum from P plus 1 to N, to K N. So this just becomes, so minus A K 1 minus dot 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 minus A K P and then minus AKP plus 1, dot, 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 minus AKN. And here's the thing. So it looks like a huge sum, but actually there are a lot of cancellations because remember, 1 up to capital N is included in this 
k1 up to kp. So it actually cancels out. So all the terms here cancel out, not with all the terms here, but with at least capital N terms. Yeah. And then, of course, it could happen that there are more terms that cancel out, but this we don't know. Okay. However, what we do know is that there are at least a m terms here because uh, again one of those terms might cancel out or not but you're just left with the bigger one of n and kn so really this thing we can say for sure is less than or equal to the sum of a k where k starts from capital n plus one because we eliminated the first capital N terms and you left either with a n or with a k n whichever one is bigger so in other words up to the maximum of n and k n which I would like to remind you is capital M but now look this is just the tail of a series Okay, a tail of the series bigger than capital N, and well, M, so notice again our hierarchy, so that was uh, capital N, of course capital N plus 1 is here, and then M was even bigger, it was huge. So definitely, what do we have? We have that M is greater or equal to capital N plus 1, and that's bigger than capital N. So, by the Cauchy criterion, with um, a being n plus 1 and b being m, remember I told you we need to choose a and b, we know for sure that this is less than epsilon over 2. All right, very good. So what do we know? We know the difference in those partial sums is less than epsilon over 2. And then essentially we can conclude, so Sn minus Sn prime is less than epsilon over 2. And therefore, now if you want second step, if you want, so since we know by definition Sn, which is the partial sums of the An, converges to uh, S, well, there is some n1, n1, such that if n is bigger than n1, maybe like this, we have that the difference of Sn and S is less than epsilon over 2. So if you just choose the maximum of everything, so if capital N2 is just the maximum of capital N and capital N1, then if N is bigger than capital N2, then the difference between Sn and you know, Sn prime and S, difference between the rearranged series and the limit is less than or equal to Sn prime minus Sn plus Sn minus S. Now, we know this is less than epsilon over 2, and we've just shown this is less than epsilon over 2, so we get this is less than epsilon. So in fact, Sn prime converges to S, and we're done, and we can stay home happy. And um, as I said, the next video, maybe linked in the description, will show something even more exciting with the um, reshuffling of the conditional convergence thing. All right, thank you very much.